Hello and welcome back to um, our next part of um, lecture two of the development of the USA from 1930 to 2000. Uh, we've discussed such things as America's involvement in the Second World War. We then went out to talk about the um, economic and um, political and population boom uh, of a sort of regarded as an affluent society that uh, America um, faced once again um, after 1945 due to its success in um, in practically affairs in Europe but um, this is something that we're going to move on with because this um, winning of the Second World War, and if you remember, the Allies are America, Britain, and uh, Russia, <clears throat> even though um, we are fighting on the side of the Russians, uh, there's, there's still a split in ideas, ideology. Um, America believes in democracy and capitalism, where Russia, uh, or the USSR, rather, um, has become a very, very powerful uh, player in the ideological war of communism, okay? And we're going to be looking at the Red Scare and what became known as McCarthyism because of Joe, um, Joe McCarthy. Um, but what, what I'm going to try and get across here is there is this festering and escalating ideological war which is known as the Cold War. Now, we, I'll have a specific lecture about that, but <clears throat> if I was to deviate and explain everything uh, in this one lecture, because we've got a few things that we've got to try and cover, um, I think it would kind of you'd, it'd get so diluted you, you wouldn't get the, the, the main bones out of uh, the body. So, the Cold War, this escalates, okay, right up until um, the the... And it's right there up until perhaps the 1990s or certainly may, may still be there. Um, who knows? But <clears throat> that's not for this sort of discussion. However, um, after 1945, there is uh, much like after um, 19 or after 1917, this fear of communism spreading. Uh, anyone who have seen my lectures on the uh, Russian civil, civil war uh, will understand how communism has already spread through Russia after the Second World War. Um, Stalin wants to make extra satellite communist states and he does and we'll be looking at that later but let's have a look at the what's going on in the domestic uh, or at home in america um you notice here that i have displayed uh, a comic book and it was called this is tomorrow and i suppose you can see here that uh, there is the threat of these proletariats or communists uh coming under the attack and the american flag getting Burnt. You can you could probably Google a couple more images there um, of this kind of feeling of an enemy within. Okay, there, there was communist parties in uh, in America. Um, they uh, communist parties all over the world. Okay, uh, following the uh, the work of Karl Marx and Lenin and Trotsky. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we'll kind of delve into how it was quite dangerous in America um, to have certain thoughts where you should be thinking. Of perhaps helping others or living in a uh, egalitarian and equal kind of society because you could quite easily be termed uh, as being a communist if we just have a quick look of what I've written on the slides in the later 1940s and early 1950s there is this ever-growing fear of communism in the uh, USA and <clears throat> This is simply known as a red scare. Uh, the color red is is symbolic with communism, yeah. Um, simply because when Lenin comes into power, uh, it's known as a red star um, shines above Moscow, shines above Russia, yeah. So red is synonymous with communism, um, okay. 
Um, and th this is, as I, I've, as I've mentioned, largely to do with the escalating um, tensions and anxieties of what is going on in the other countries. OK, we, as I said, the Cold War is something we will go into further detail in a later lecture. Uh, but let's stay on track and find out what is happening at home in America. Here's just a quick overview. Uh, you can see the two colours here of your Eastern Bloc and your Western Bloc. Um, and obviously America would be shown in blue as well if it was on this map. But um, you can see the kind of satellite control that the Soviet Union has over Eastern Bloc countries. Um, all of these operate under your Communist Party, okay? Um, and they are directed by the Communist Party um, of Stalin's rule. And this is this is in uh, Moscow, okay? Uh, in Russia. Now, <clears throat> you can see the Iron Curtain, and that goes up after World War Two. Um, but we'll move on. But you can you can you can see the expansion. You can see the fear that. Um, I'll explain how it's rapidly sweeping ever westward. Okay. Now, uh, also to mention in 1949, China turned communist as well. So you can see that there's there's a global concern. Um, and in 1953, there's a Korean War fought. Uh, on this syllabus, I will probably go into it later in another lecture when we're looking at um, perhaps the, uh, perhaps I might chunk them together and we have uh, a lecture on the wars that were fought, fought or a certain part in a lecture of the wars being fought. But there is this rising fear of the world getting enveloped in communism. Okay, um, you can look to uh, your Russian Revolution uh, or perhaps my lectures on that and make your own mind up onto the impact of what the communist state is and uh, and the consequences. Moving on. At this time at home in America, there is, I suppose, um, it, it becomes a witch hunt. It really does. But in 1947, um, the HUAC, or the House of Un-American Activities Committee, which is set up to monitor, certainly the FBI are involved, and um, J. Edgar Hoover um, of the, um, has has a, a great dislike of communism, a, a fear, a paranoia of it as well. Um, so the U.S. Congress investigate a uh, member of the Hollywood industry, or members rather of the Hollywood industry, and they are known as the the Hollywood Ten. Uh, these are writers, producers, directors, actors uh, suspected of having communist links. Um, it's quite interesting to know that um, Charlie Chaplin, um, one of America's idols, uh, was was deemed to be a communist, and he was kept out from re of returning from America uh, on one of his travels. Uh, but if we look at this, because it's it's mentioned in the syllabus, um, and it, it could be something you'd have to write on in the exam, um, there is protest. People are not happy about this. And they, they, they are simply arrested um, after refusing um, to, to give any answers to the interrogation. They didn't feel that they had to explain themselves. Remember, America is a democratic nation, and they believed in taking the Fifth Amendment, okay? Um, but for this, they are they are seen to be criminals, communists, and they, they are jailed, okay, for not submitting answers. Um, likewise, in 1949, we have the Hiss and Rosenberg cases, and if we look at uh, Alga Hiss, who's... Um, a member of the U.S. State, State Department is actually accused of being a spy. Um, here's a photo of him in court. And later on, Nixon actually uncovers what become known as the pumpkin papers because it's a microfilm um, in another uh, in another member of the, of the U.S. State Department office uh, it's actually they, uh, they meet up at a farm and this microfilm is concealed in a pumpkin which is shown to nixon and we'll be talking about nixon later um so he's one to watch but i don't want to confuse you with him too much but nixon uh becomes kind of 
noted for being a uh, a solver of communist crime or or certainly a true american and and the pursuer of communists and vanquishing the communist threat um same year 1949 uh the ussr actually have developed an atomic bomb of their own and they test it they drop it okay Bush. hey love my graphics and um the only way it is thought that the ussr could have achieved this is through spying on america or the american scientists that then takes us to the case of julius and ethel rosenberg who were found guilty of spying for the ussr and they were executed um although very very little evidence is there at all um but the both of them are given the death penalty okay now it's senator joe mccarthy that really does create this sense of hysteria um i'm going to try something on my video now that um or on my presentation rather which i haven't tried before so i hope it'll work you um i'm going to try and take you to a short clip uh, of uh, television um, information broadcast which would tell Americans how to spot a communist okay so um, this video speak louder than words Therefore, propaganda is vastly more important in democratic studies the communist physically physically physical appearance, appearance constitutes the communist appearance for nothing if, if he openly, openly declares, declares himself to be a communist, communist we, we take his word for it. If, if a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. If a person supports organizations which reflect communist teachings, or organizations labeled communist by the Department of Justice, he may be a communist. If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. If a person does all these things over a period of time, he must be a communist. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. By the early 19th there we go so as you can see there's an information broadcast um during the 19 late 1940s uh coming into the 50s that um whoop, that uh, expresses this kind of fear okay and if you can remember in nazi germany there's the same sort of thing it's 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 a a cloud of mist if you will uh there's no uh, even in the advert may be a communist may be a communist um but they can take you in and interrogate you and there's a lot of civil liberties uh just like in nazi germany which which are taken away okay uh, another another saying for this is reds under the beds uh because um and, and another slogan was better better dead than red uh, for the hatred of communism um, but you you can kind of get from these slogans there's a hatred there's a fear reds under the beds for instance uh, the enemy is already in hiding and it's creeping up on you when you're not you know when you when you're trying to sleep at night you know you, you, you're not meant to feel safe is um is the sort of campaign that the the likes of mccarthy and it becomes known as um mccarthyism is is it's given his name and we'll, we'll find out why um but the main point is this mccarthyism it it was a witch hunt and it put a lot of innocent lives at danger and to the death penalty okay so mccarthy's campaign and claims was it was a derogatory campaign very much such as what hitler would have done um to the the communists uh, or the social democrats um and of course eventually the the jewish race um based on exaggeration and, and at points downright lies okay um 
he, he sort of rises because he does appear to be a patriotic American uh, trying to root out all communist traitors, but he, he oversteps the mark here, and, you, and you'll see why. Um, so from 1950, 53, uh, he does, he extends profiles and he gets more and more trying, uh, more and more into the the higher power figures, which um, are causing an impact on the private life the, of the high, the, the private life of uh, perhaps politicians and um the individual at home um, and institutions of America. I'll just show you a few examples. He claims that he had a list of 205 communists who were working in the State Department, which dealt with foreign affairs. Um, so it's this kind of global um, accusation that uh, these people are in cahoots with Russia. Okay. Um, the funny thing about this is that the, um, the, the the list he can't really produce it and he keeps altering figures. Um, so therefore, I, it, it became known as um, the Heinz 57 list, uh, simply because of the 57 varieties that the uh, that the food producers Heinz offered in their line of soup and baked beans. So it, it was... Um, it was his propaganda, and as I said, it's mixed with lies as well, yeah, which propaganda often is. Um, he also targets libraries for anti-American books, uh, which he believes could be written by communists. Um, and in that very essence, it's taking away a freedom of speech, yeah, because these books are taken from the reading lists of certain schools and certain libraries, okay? So... You can't really get a bigger picture of, of what is going on through through an author's work. So it is, as I said, it's censorship, yeah? It doesn't sound like a democratic country through these means, yeah? Okay. Um, and his hearings and public statements destroyed the lives of thousands of people by his witch hunt tactics. Uh, once you were labelled as or sus suspected even of being a communist, uh, you could not then get a job because you would be blacklisted. And... The death of innocent ones, that would have had an impact as well, okay? So there's thousands of lives are affected um, by McCarthy and his campaign, which he has no evidence, okay? And it's driven simply by this red scare feeling that's in the air, okay? Right, um, he really does mess up. He says his own fate by casting doubt upon the security of the army. Okay, so he is challenged. He's asked to, pro to produce that evidence, which he cannot do. And another thing that goes against him is that, that it's a televised broadcast where for the first time, um, the public uh, not meeting him personally can kind of see him um, and kind of understand and recognize or rather his his actual stance and his tactics are on show for for quite a large population to see remembering that the television is quite massively uh, popular and is very very affordable okay so this is broadcasted and he comes across as being rude abusive and and a bully okay so for a lot of Americans a lot of Democrats they're not gonna like this okay so his popularity falls dramatically and he's dismissed from office. And in 1957, he dies a very lonely, bitter alcoholic. Okay. Now, the new frontier. We're switching here to a new stance um, by a president who uh, is JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Um, now, I'm sure you would have heard uh, of, of this president. So... Again, his life, I'm sure you would, uh, would be synonymous with assassination, with Marilyn Monroe, um, with, with a lot of, with, with Kevin Costner, even in the film JFK. But um, please feel free to uh, pursue that at your own leisure. When it comes to the GCSE course, you won't have to go into depth. What we're trying to pull out here are his political changes to america so if we do go through them i will i will try and make 
uh, this this interesting. Um, but as we have as as we've already made quite aware uh, by 1960 after 1945, America is enjoying is enjoying a very strong economic, military, and political position, and it hasn't been challenged. Okay, um, it's kind of you know I mean it won the Second World War, uh, the other wars it's it's won. Okay, so it's it's strong. All right, it's strong, and it's it's it gives this. Um, picture of being highly successful nobody can beat this okay Eisenhower just to fill in the little gap here you have we, uh, in the last lecture we talked about Truman Eisenhower um, replaces uh, Truman and Eisenhower is then in turn succeeded by John Fitzgerald Kennedy JFK and he is a Democrat okay so um, as opposed to a Republican, he's trying to put himself in a position where the powerful help the weak, okay? Or those with power look after those who don't hold power, okay? Um, so he introduces a program of reform which aimed to tackle three focus areas, uh, poverty, inequality, and deprivation. Um, The Presidential Commission, um, which was published, uh, Goals for, uh, for American, um, doesn't see any, any serious cause for concern, okay? But there are underlying, well, as, I, as I've written up the top here, underlying cracks beneath the face of America, there are. And these fall into uh, your three different brackets, your civil rights, um, I don't believe so far in the lectures I, I've put across the uh, racism or the inequality of African Americans, uh, but we'll certainly be crossing that. But but to, uh, to keep it um, no, no, not simple because it doesn't give the, the 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 weight to the actual situation. But Black or African Americans were becoming more and more frustrated and impatient with the slow progress being made in stopping segregation and achieving equal rights. Um, certainly, there is um, there, there, there's going to be a lecture and keeping it all together about the um, the. Black Americans and and their um, their struggle and fight for civil rights, uh, which hasn't taken place, and and segregation. You know, um, Black American school children um, aren't allowed to 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 say share the same classrooms, share the same schools, even um, as white white American. Uh, children, okay, so there is a there is a, a big equality problem going on there, and it is the cracks that start to rumble. But we'll we'll, we'll cross that later on in the next lecture. Um, the urban decline, um, as I said, suburbia. When we when we discuss the 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 white middle class classes moving to these 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 affluent areas of suburbia, well, they, they're basically um, it's it's. You know, they're migrating out of the, the inner city and they are taking their affluence, they're taking their money, their fortunes. And as, as I said, because they can, uh, they, they own the cars, they can go back and forth. They do need to work in the city so they don't have to live in the city. So there's this um, decline and neglect really of, of the cities there. Sorry, I've just noticed the poverty sort of runs in there, but there is a poverty and there's rising crime, there's frustration, okay? Um, a link here is that, you know, there are white people living in the in the ghettos, um, but it's it's more likely to be black population, okay? Um, and and there's just this, this rise of uh, frustration, anger and, and a sense of hopelessness. You know, there, there is an isolation, there is a neglect there, okay? Um, so, uh, by this point, I, I suppose it's worth mentioning that 50% of black Americans do live in the north, do live in um, in the cities. They, they you know, uh, they have migrated there to, to, to attempt to get jobs, okay? So, the third one is the foreign policy. Now, we mentioned the Cold War and we know that there are 
issues there um but it's it becomes really uh, an arms race as well um as i said there's they, tackling for who can get the 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 best nuclear weapons who can who can completely just win the war i mean america had the first atomic bomb and it was only until russia kind of gets one that they're sort of on a par now and and we you know we go into the cold war and you'll see the um the futility of creating these weapons of mass destruction or, or, or world world destruction really um and and we, we we'll have to go into that at more depth um in in another lecture so it's the foreign policy uh that, that, that there are stresses and strains upon okay and certain people realize well you know um but ban the bomb yeah it's something as i said we will go into and and look you know we don't we don't really want another war you 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 guys might but uh, we we don't you know not everybody wants war in 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 a specific or a certain country okay and uh, as i say here uh, the cold war is continuing the usa are increasingly challenged by the ussr in europe asia and even in the caribbean by the ussr's protege Cuba. Now we will look at that later. That's the Bay of Pigs and um, the Cuban Missile Crisis. So don't worry about that. Okay, everything will be covered. But that's the thing when you when you study a long period of time, you have to break it off and kind of put it under brackets or under umbrellas. And that's what I'm going to do. So if we look at the idea, if we give you an idea of Kennedy, if you've never heard of him, JFK classed himself as an idealist uh, without delusions, a practical man that but practical and wanting a very positive future okay um he was the youngest ever president at the age of 43 so much of his support came from the younger generation okay and he and he is he's very kind of um i mean if you if you look at uh hoover and look at roosevelt uh, eisenhower and truman um they they haven't got that kind of film star quality you know they they they, they look like um uh, certainly with the age you know they, they look at men they look like men of experience but they don't necessarily ha have this charm and this charisma um which uh, you do you do kind of get from jfk i'll put a, i'll put a little video on now and you'll see him in action um so as, as i said earlier on he's a democrat so he believes in extending welfare benefits okay looking after those that that are needy um and and as i've already said he's charmed his speeches his sense of energy i suppose inspired and it, and it captivates people and there's there's plenty of evidence of that uh, you know <clears throat> uh, but likewise as i said charisma um and style uh, this is what the politician is you know this is what makes a, a great politician you know and let me see if this will work so perhaps you get a a glimpse of him in action. And both sides seek to invoke the wonders of science instead of its terrors. Together, Together let, let us explore, explore the stars, conquer the deserts, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depth, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let, let both sides unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. And if they each head of cooperation may push back the jungle of suspicion, let both sides join in creating a new endeavor. Not a new balance of power, but a new world of law, where the strong are just, and the weak secure, and the peace preserved. All this will not be finished in the first 100 days. Nor will, Nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days. Nor in the life of this administration. Nor even perhaps in our lifetime on this planet. But let us be here.
in your hands, my fellow citizens, more than mine, will rest the final success of failure of our course. Since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. The graves of young Americans who answered the call of the service surround the globe. Now the prophet summons us again. Now as they call to bear arms, the arms we need. Now as a call to battle, though in battle we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle, year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a Okay, so there you see um, Kennedy, a sample of his Ask Not speech, and his famous, uh, his famous words in that speech should continue, is ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I'm sure you may have heard of that. Um, so just just the kind of um, because I, as I've mentioned, um, it's important that you do get the grips with um, his his reforms um, on civil rights, economy, and society. Okay, and there's there's plenty of here here to help you. Um, I, I don't want to read this out parrot fashion and, and looking at a table like this always um, kind of puts me off. I know that. But his greatest achievement really is um, in, in civil rights. He's making a movement there um, to um, recognize and to introduce. I mean, it, it has to be kind of piecemeal measures. Uh, there's a lot of hatred. And I mean, that, 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 that's why the, uh, the American Civil War was, was fought over slavery um, and, and the inequalities towards African-American um, race. But uh, here you can see uh, Thurgood Marshall is introduced as being the first black judge in America and uh, Kennedy's um, presidency. And as I just said, you, you can see that there's opposition as well. And that opposition is really going to come from southern congressmen who have this deep rooted uh, belief that, you know, and, and what they, they'll keep reminding at that point is that, you know, their forefathers or their ancestors, uh, they, they died um, tackling um, th this kind of dismissal of slavery. However, um, again, people in, in, in uh, and therefore people in Kennedy's party um, believe that if he's going to upset them, then they, the party will lose votes from the South. OK, so you can see that the civil rights, even though he does make... Um, uh, these these successful reforms, and he does introduce the first civil rights bill, okay, which is which is a bill, not an act yet, but we will see the next president push that forward, okay. Um, again, these will be in other lectures as well, so we we really just need to concentrate on what JFK did here, the economy. He introduces uh, nine hundred million. To public works, okay, um, and this is this is putting people back into work as well. So it has a certain certain social reform here, um, and he cuts taxes to encourage people to buy goods. Well, uh, he, again, he cuts the 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 middle class taxes, right, um, and. Uh, he, he can be seen to be in a kind of socialist there when he, he wants this kind of social reform, which, we, which we'll have a look. So people were suspicious of this new frontier. I mean, you're going up against the businessmen there or the rich, yeah, um, because you are almost on the um, introduction then of looking after the workers. So it does make it... Um, uh, a, a socialist program there okay and um another thing is is, is social reform i mean you, you you can probably remember roosevelt's social security so he's doing um he's making advancements on on the social security um act previously in in um 
in Roosevelt's uh, second New Deal. Okay, as as you will find uh, if you look at that lecture or your handouts there. Um, so he's he's quite prepared to, as he says, uh, it's 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 the new frontier. So he wants to make it. Uh, a better place for people to live and, and he does this simply by you know uh, tackling issues of long-term unemployment getting people back to work you know providing better house care uh, or, or housing um, conditions if you will and and to give cheaper loans for redevelopment in these inner cities okay so there is the sense of you know the fixing of uh, they, they, they become known as the ghettos um, because of the squalor and the poverty much like the uh, you know the the, the, the Warsaw ghetto or the Polish ghettos in um, in Nazi Germany at that time okay um, but again, because he's willing to look after the, the you know the weak or the, or those that need the help, the Republicans would 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 oppose him because um, they they believe in this self help you know and this this rugged individualism attitude um, that um, you know you you can work your way up everybody has the ability to work their way up and they don't need handouts I suppose it's very easy to say if you are a wealthy man. Um, perhaps if you were born into that that type of um, prosperity, um, I, I believe we all do need a helping hand at some point, you know. Um, so moving on, you can sort of get. Hopefully, you can get the gist here of um, JFK's democratic uh, values, yeah, and hopefully the opposition to them as well. On the 22nd of November 1963, JFK is driving through Texas. He was allegedly assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald. These are iconic images. This certainly is. Um, I'm a, maybe I shouldn't, but I'm assuming you may have seen this. If not, um, you you can uh, I mean hey rent, rent out or or like Netflix now I suppose um, may have JFK on there check it out okay that'll give you more of a picture or or perhaps do some some research yourself it's very very interesting but I I could run a whole course on this I'm sure but Oswald was killed while in police custody Lee Harvey Oswald okay and the reason for JFK's death is one of history's greatest mysteries a lot of conspiracy surrounded by that uh, there's J um, there's Lee Harvey Oswald the patsy as he was known and a convenient um, photograph of him uh, with him holding the rifle that supposedly killed JFK uh, with his finger on the trigger and a Russian newspaper so <clears throat> you read into that uh, what you will uh, propaganda or intentional um, or, or true uh, that's that's up to you okay um, we, we probably will never know because uh, Lee Harvey Oswald whilst in police captivity um, being escorted is assass assassinated himself by Jack Ruby um, who had connections to the mafia and organized crime but again this is for another time or it's you certainly won't need need this for for the exam okay it's not going to be required but it's just interesting pieces of that historical jigsaw that you've got to have them they're the corners uh and sometimes the center and all over the place and if you don't put them together you never get that picture okay so that is where jfk has left us and he is then replaced okay um, by Lyndon Baines Johnson, okay, LBJ. Um, he's a decent man, and he wishes to build upon JFK's policies, okay, of tackling these these these, these three issues of the unemployment, this bad housing, the in inadequate medical uh, medical care. Oh boy, I must be getting tired. It's a late one tonight. Uh, he believed that this would create a great society, okay. Uh, during his presidency. Um, Americans become divided by certain issues of race, okay, um, of social reform, but but of race, okay, social reform certainly, okay, uh, opposition to the Vietnam War and civil rights for Black Americans, okay, um, it's 
this one that we're going to really look at and this and this social reform and the civil rights for black Americans are very strongly linked and, you, and you'll see what I mean because um, on the syllabus it actually asks us um, whether there is affluence for all and um, perhaps I won't allow you to come to your own conclusions with that but I, I think I've made it quite evident as this lecture goes on um, but let's quickly look at America's longest war which is the war of, the, of Vietnam or the Vietnam War and we'll have a look at America's longest war in brief okay so let's do this as quickly as we can Vietnam is in Southeast Asia and it had been split in by civil war civil war because okay communists controlled the north and the south was anti-communist now please don't think that this south is a democratic part of um vietnam it wasn't okay um it was run very corruptly 50 percent of the land was owned by two percent of the wealthy um the reason america does back the the, the south is it even though it's not democratic they want to stop this spread of communism right so they can see they can be seen as jumping into um into bed with a with a, with, a, with an undemocratic you know there's the criticism they have an undemocratic country simply to stop uh communism but i suppose the means justify the ends in in their eyes okay but um a few things here um, I mean, if you've watched any, any of your movies here, you know, Rambo, um, Good Morning Vietnam, uh, Full Metal Jacket, you, you'll get a lot of the Hollywoodized depictions um, of, of this type. Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump as well. OK, but, um, so, but, but most of the South Vietnamese supported the communist backed national liberation front so you can see even though the south was run and was against communism okay because it's run by the wealthy so they don't want to give up their wealth their land their property okay their power their status um, yeah whole russian revolution stuff there um they do build um a guerrilla styled army there and it's 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 known as the Viet Cong. all right but it's actually um there's the abbreviation there but it's the national liberation front okay um as i've said it's, it's a guerrilla army uh, but it is supplied by russia um to to aid them in in their in their you know expansion of the communist state china which has become a communist country as well and north vietnam as well which um which they do this through uh, different trade routes and um, there's also um, by, by ferry or, or by sea rather um, and you can see that um, it, it is being funded okay I mean you, you could put, pull up a map to, to actually I should have put it on here but you, you can pull up a map um, the Ho Chi Minh Trail will show you all of the, the kind of different ways that um, the Viet Cong army as such is being supplied okay uh, but we will be looking at Viet vietnam the war in greater detail okay this is just to give you an overview uh 1961 jfk sends u.s military assistance to south vietnam okay uh why well this goes back to truman president truman had the domino theory about communism um and of how it how it would spread if it wasn't and it's a policy of what it will what can be classed as it containment um he sees it this is probably the best way to to describe the domino uh, theory or the domino effect yeah uh, it, and uh, eisenhower believes in it as, as well after truman and it's really a case of um if we if we listen to eisenhower's words you have a row of dominoes set up uh you knock over the first one and what will happen to the last one is the certainty that it will go down very quickly so if they don't contain vietnam that would hit Laos, that would hit Cambodia, that would filter through to Thailand, Burma, India, Bangladesh. Bangladesh. So if you think about it, they would lose all of South um, Southeast Asia and, and, and the other islands there to communism. Okay, so they had to contain it, hence it's known as containment in this Vietnam War. Uh, and they believed that they would they, they just go over there and, um, you know, 
uh, whoop ass uh, because heck, you know, uh, they're not as civilized. They haven't got the technology um, as the Americans. But we'll go into that um, in a, in another lecture because we can spend more time. And and you, if you don't already know the outcome. Well, the outcome is that America has to withdraw, okay? It's a war they thought they'd win quite easily, uh, but it becomes a very, very bad one and a very bad blemish, like a lot of things on American history, okay? Um, but when J JFK is assassinated, it's, it's, it's important to know this, that there, are, uh, there were rather 16,000 U.S. soldiers in Vietnam. Um, not so much that they important to know that they were called advisors, but that figure we'll return to that. Um, they were called advisors because it wasn't really seen as being a, a an, an act of war. There, okay, they, they're there to advise. You can see how an M sixteen would advise quite a lot of people to do a lot of things. Uh, but if we move on, remaining with um, Johnson, LBJ. Um, just to give you an overview, he, 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 he did try to do the right thing, but this, uh, the the Vietnam War is really the the big weight around around his neck and his his shoulders here. Okay, um, and and sometimes he is overlooked as a you because of the popularity of JFK. I mean, when JFK is assass assassinated, um, you you will hear um, the Americans say, "I remember." Um, the day uh, it's, it's almost like a 9-11 uh, where I could I could remember what I was doing uh, the day that I heard that JFK was, was was assassinated you know it kind of rocks the world there a guy that was trying to do good and he's assassinated but um, so it's very shocking so th that kind of takes away um, the the shine in American history of, of what LBJ uh, accomplishes um, Because of this domino theory, because uh, the, you know the stop of um, the communist threat, uh, you know the fear back home, the Red Scare that is still there, um, not not uh, in in this kind of state of McCarthyism, but it's still there. Um, this fear of um, communism, you know, sweeping over uh, Europe and and actually getting. Um, get it becoming a global threat, which which it is. You know, there's there's other uh, countries now that are that are kind of you know having this red star shining over them. Um, another another thing as well, although I'm not sure if I put it on here, is uh, it, it, America doesn't want to lose a war. Okay, so so they're gonna put effort and supplies and because um, what president would want to be the president? of the United States uh, during the first war that they had lost. Okay, America hasn't lost a war at this point. All right. So, um, or did I put that in? No, I didn't. But that, 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 that's quite a valid point as well. Okay. Um, so let, let's go back to the Great Society. I knew I'd digress. I always do. Okay. Um, so... He declares maybe um, a war also not 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 only on or continues the war on Vietnam, but he declares a war on poverty and he wants to improve the health of the poor and the old with better diets and living conditions. A big thing is immediate end to racial injustice. His words. OK, um, so he wants he wants to push the civil rights movement um, for black Americans, too, um, which he does. Uh, he tackled issues of racial discrimination. Um, you know, when it came to the, the inequalities of black uh, Americans getting work, uh, how they were provided and, and segregation. OK, um, we can we can see how we could do things uh, rather than maybe faster than JFK could um, because. He had a wealth of his experience. He, he was an experienced po politician. You know, he knew um, he knew how to get things done, how to make deals at Congress. OK, I mean, if, if you want to see um, Cameron saying he was inspired by, by the actual series House of Cards, I don't think it's there to be um, to, to be an aspiration you know, or a template. But it certainly is the way the politics works. And um, uh, but but you can see the certain leverage, a certain sway sway that you can that, that you need to be. Uh, in in the White House um, or in Congress even okay um, 
as I said, so he knows how to make deals. Uh, and he was very successful at this, uh, certainly his civil rights, uh, the signing of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And here we have someone who we will meet again. Um, I wonder if you could tell me that is MLK, Martin Luther King. OK, but we'll we'll return to him. So basically, the civil rights, there's, there, there's more equality, um, segregation is, is being stopped, uh, prejudice in in uh, in employment okay um, however maybe not enough because there's still cracks there and those cracks are getting wider and wider yeah uh, another thing is it, it because he was a southern democrat okay um, he can understand and overcome the opposition of those of those fixed uh, traditionalists and habits of you know um, the prejudice and, and, and slavery is something that, you know, is a right, okay? Uh, because, as I said, the South are strongly opposed to the civil rights and the equality of, of the black Americans, okay? Others would say he was he was a six-foot, five-inch man, so his frame could intimidate people. Uh, I couldn't actually find a picture of him uh, next to anyone or, or stood up, he's normally seated or, you know, be, behind um, his... his um, speech uh, pulpit or, t or table um uh, so but 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 that's one thing that, I, that i've read in a book that uh, his, his size kind of intimidates people not that i'm saying he was a he was a nasty guy you know but uh, just his size sort of spoke louder than perhaps his words sometimes okay um but he face, faces the, the same kind of opposition um because he appears to be undermining this rugged individualism or the self-help of what Hoover believes, you know, or any Republican believes of American um, American sort of success is that you can do it on your own. Um, and again, he is criticized for doing too little to improve conditions in, in the inner cities, maybe um, concentrating on civil rights instead of uh, social reforms or, or, or tackling the bad housing. Uh, some of the reasons for this is, yes, he's plowing a lot of money into the Vietnam War. Um, um, so his greatest criticism is because of the escalation of the U.S. in Nam. Um, you know, they send a lot of life, uh, a lot of young life, sorry, over there. Um, the average age of 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 the um, Vietnam soldier was nineteen. We when we go into Vietnam, uh, the lecture of that, you we can go into it in more depth. Um, so it's, it's costly, it diverts money from a great society, and it also causes him increasingly personal criticism about his his roles and, you know, um, his, his decisions and actions, okay? So he decides not to run for re-election in 1968. And just if you remember, it was 16,000, I believe. Um, well, I know, 16,000 uh, when JFK was assassinated. That has escalated to, instead of there being 16,000, um, there are now over half a million soldiers fighting in Nam by 1968, okay? So... That's Johnson's overview and his great society. I said maybe at the beginning we were going to look at uh, what was there an affluence, was there a richness in America for all? Um, well, by 1965, 50% of black Americans lived in the North, which I've mentioned earlier. Um, most of them lived in ghettos where slum housing, high unemployment and poor schools were prominent. Um, Health care was inadequate. Um, you can see the rundown almost, um, you know, packed in. And I mean, you can remember the Hoovervilles, uh, but, but these are um, tenements where um, very, very unhygienic, very, very unhealthy for, for children, for families to, to live in, packed in tightly. Um, Create, creates frustration, anger, um, which which leads to, to crime, you know. Um, public transport didn't allow for easy travel to work outside the city, so it's not as if the, the, the black Americans could um, go to other places to work. They were stuck and very, very limited 
Um, we, we, we see this to, to, today, you know, I mean, if you look at Wales in certain parts when industry fails, um, how, how do those people actually get out and get new new jobs, new work? You know, it's, it's not really available. Um, they, they can't afford a car, therefore they can't afford to travel to work, therefore they can't afford to um, provide themselves or, or open doors or get other opportunities. Um, so so it's, it's, it's kind of a template you can follow there. Um, and we'll be wrapping this up shortly. So just just to kind of make you think for yourself, uh, this equated all of this sort of deprivation, you know, um, as as I spoke earlier on, lack of transport, uh, lack of education, although things were his, his, his civil rights, you know, under Johnson, his civil rights um, programs and, and the signing of the uh, the civil right. Uh, Act of 1964 did make a difference, but um, we still have yet to see how that pans out. Um, so, white Americans were a lot more affluent. Uh, there's the clue than black Americans, okay, or as I put here, black Americans being significantly poorer than white Americans. Um, the government, the police, and the authorities of of these cities, they are not black American, okay. Uh, so we can uh, kind of you can say that its power is held in a in a white hand. So there's further injustice there, and one third uh, of black American families in America were poor. Whereas compared to 10% of white families were poor. I think the, the saddening and perhaps the shocking statistic, which if you are going to think um, was there affluence, if you, if you need to ask that question, was there affluence for everyone, um, twice as many black American babies died as white American babies. Okay, um, was it a great society? My apologies, and I will leave you with that very somber and sad fact, and I will catch up with you in the next part of Lecture 2 and speak to you then. Thank you very much for listening.